Come on, let's build both the world's tallest and longest bridge. Its stake stands 625 meters above the river. If you placed it in Beijing, Guangzhou, or Shanghai, this is what it would look like. Mm -hmm. And if you added the height of the towers, it could stand side by side with the tallest buildings on Earth. At such a height, even a free fall from the deck would take 11 seconds before hitting the ground. This is the Huajiang Canyon Bridge in Guizhou, China, officially opened to traffic on September 28, 2025, which is today. Why did we build such a tall bridge? And how was it completed in less than four years? So let's figure out how we built it. What you see now is Guizhou's modern highway network. It may not look special at first glance, but in fact it is built across a land of natural barriers. There are 1.258 million mountain peaks here, 92.5% of the province is mountains and hills. Eight major rivers and continents tributaries cut out a maze of deep valleys. This meant that to build the Lu'an Expressway connecting two counties in southwestern Guizhou, China, engineers had to face one of the most dangerous stretches of the Beipan River the Huajiang Canyon. There are two options of similar cost. Either keep a gentle slope and a smoother route, but cross the canyon near the mountain top with an extremely tall bridge. Or lower the bridge height but face much steeper grade and many long tunnels. Engineers choose to face the 625 meter height directly, but in a V-shaped canyon, spanning at that height meant a distance of more than 1,400 meters from back to back. Even the tallest pile steel girded bridges in the world were not tall enough. The longest arch bridges could not stretch across here. Even the longest cable-stayed bridges were still insufficient. So as clever as you to build a bridge at this site, the only answer was a super long span suspension bridge. But how do you build the world's tallest and also longest span suspension bridge? Hmm? In theory, it is just three steps. Build two strong towers, stretch two solid cables across, and then hand the main deck with vertical suspenders. Congratulations, you have a suspension bridge. Well, not quite so simple. To less the 262 meter towers stand firmly on mountaintops, engineers not only have to find a solid rock, but also drive to deep or giant concrete piles deep into the mountain. How deep? After 68 meters above a 20-story building underground and above ground, the 200-meter tower shafts were divided into more than 40 stages and using climbing formwork machine powered by hydraulics. The towers rose at a speed of 0.8 meters per day. At the same time, a huge concrete block was cast. Its size, nearly 400,000 tons in weight. Only such mass could anchor the two main cables and hold up the entire deck. This is called a gravity anchor. On the opposite side, where there was no space for such anchors, engineers used the mountains itself, embedding anchors deep into tunnels cut into the rock. This is called a tunnel anchor. With towers and anchors complete, the cables could finally be erected. From afar, they look thin, but in reality, each cable is nearly one meter in diameter, wide enough for a person to walk across. But how do such massive cables leap across 1,400 meters of canyon? The answer begins with drums carrying a thin pilot rope to the other side. That rope pulls across a thicker rope, which pulls across an even thicker rope, and so on. After such steps, a temporary construction walkway is strong between the towers. This is called a catwalk. How about take your cat to walk on that? On this catwalk, traction system to pull across the strands of the main cable. Each strand is made of 91 high-strength steel wires, each 5.7 millimeters thick. The very first strand is the most critical. Surveying instruments and Beidou satellite navigation must keep errors within 2 millimeters. Once 217 strands are in place, a compaction machine squeezes them into a single main cable. Next come the vertical suspenders and then preparations for lifting the main deck. But the deck as a whole weighs as much as 95 of China's largest Y-20 transport aircraft, far too heavy to lift at once. So it was divided into 93 segments, starting from the middle and working out to both sides. Even then, such segment weighed over 200 tons, equal to lifting the entire set of blades of the world's largest wind turbine, and joining them precisely while strong winds could strike at any moment. At this point, how many stars of difficulty would you give this project?
the chief engineer said, actually, there weren't many difficulties. This was not arrogance, but confidence built on decades of experience. In truth, finishing the world's tallest bridge took far more than four years. Its origins go back six years ago when the Pintang Bridge set the record for the tallest concrete bridge tower. Nine years ago when the Beipan River Bridge and the Hanrei Expressway opened, holding the title of world's highest bridges until today. Sixteen years ago when the Bani River Bridge first broke the 1,000 meter span barrier in the mountains. Twenty-four years ago when China first touched the record of the world's highest bridge. Or perhaps even earlier when the first Beidou satellite was launched into space. On the Huaten Canyon Bridge, engineers tested many new technologies, smart chips and cooling pipes to precisely control anchor temperature, laser radar to monitor wind speed and direction, and even intelligent hoisting systems that keep millimeter level accuracy. These technologies may be unprecedented, but they will not be the last, and more mega projects arise, former barriers will become wild for a kind of landscape. Instead, from the very beginning, this bridge was never just about cutting travel time from two hours to two minutes. It was also designed as a major tourist destination, and across Guizhou province, its 30,000 bridges form not only a highway network, but also a network of breathtaking scenery. One day, visitors will discover that the phrase low flat land for three feet is Guizhou's biggest misconception, because here, human hands have built a man-made high-speed plane, and locals will discover that the faraway world is no longer unreachable, and their hometown is no longer a place they cannot return to. A million mountain peaks will finally have a million roads out. Today, the bridge opened to traffic. The Huajun Canyon service area also began operation. People gave it a beautiful name, Yundu, means crossing the clouds. A bridge flying over the clouds, mountains turned to plains, barriers turned to passages. This is the mission of the world's tallest bridge. This is the mission of Guizhou's 30,000 bridges. It is also the mission of China's 1 million bridges. Follow me, an Eastern perspective, to see the world. So China just invented a damn bone glue that assists with bone, broken fractured bones, right? No technology needed, no extra shit needed, just some bone glue. And this bone glue, y'all, heals fractured bones in as small as three minutes. There is no advancement in America. And when there is advancement in America, what happens to those people? What happens to those who are creating cars that's running off water, although that's already been around, everyone who has done it, they've already died. What happens to the young man who's showing us how to get free energy or showing us how to basically create oil from plastic? They don't broadcast these things. We are watching countries all around the world like China, Taiwan, Beijing, whatever else, have advanced technology that's honestly beneficial to society, right? as opposed to decreasing society's growth how it is in the US and don't get it twisted I'm not really big on technology I'm not big on all of these data centers I'm not big on a lot of shit but I am big on advancement but this is some crazy well some good shit for China honestly but the fact that I have to be an American <laughs> and watch these fucking people continuously provide us with nothing but bullshit every single day it's crazy <laughs> Huawei just previewed Harmony OS 6.0 and it includes a robot operating system. In other words, Huawei is giving robots a ring. So the real explosion here isn't just another phone OS upgrade, and it's not about car systems either. This thing is no longer the clean robot or smart home gadgets people usually think of, it's humanoid. A few days ago, Unitry Robotics said they are making a 1.8 meter tall robot. Could Huawei be heading that way too? Huawei itself will build robots just like it does build cars, but look at the cars Huawei has helped design and powered. They've become some of the world's most advanced. So the real question is, which robotics company will Huawei buy into? Which stock should you be watching? If how many OS6 really shows alive on stage how it controls robots with brand new core technology that makes them respond 90% faster than traditional systems, stand up instantly after falling, and even carry large AI models that not only understand human commands, but also assist in decision making, then isn't that basically winning at every scale? That means how many OS6 that isn't just a human car home ecosystem anymore. It's a human robot car home ecosystem. All 
all four combined from tiny desktop robots to 1.8 meter industrial giants, all running seamlessly on one operating system. Even if the memory is squeezed down to just 2 GB, smaller than your phone takes up, it could still control hundreds of joints and dexterous hands moving at once. Isn't that insane? This move hits right at the biggest pain point in the 80 billion dollars global robotics industry currently. There's no dominant, however, operating system. Phones have iOS, but in robotics, until now, nobody. How many OS 6.0 is saying it's me? Of course, there will be challenges ahead. Standards aren't unified, interfaces aren't consistent, stability may be an issue. But Huawei has always solved those problems on its own. What should we, the consumers, worry about? The only thing to worry about is that whether we all make enough money to buy one of these advanced robots. Follow me an Eastern perspective to see the world.